Welcome, guys, to the first day of Owl House Stravaganza here on the AJ Universe channel. In case you guys missed it in my most recent review prior to this, a review of Teen Titans Snowblind, I am going to take the next two weeks to cover the remaining eight Owl House episodes that I haven't reviewed yet leading up to the premiere of Season 2. Having gotten that out of the way, today's Owl House episode, Adventures in the Elements, had so much more to it than I remembered. The first act of the episode is basically just the main character is BSing around, getting up to the point where the main action of the story happens. In fact, their interactions here at the beginning of the episode feel almost like a reintroduction to these characters it makes me wonder if this one was like a mid-season premiere or something and i just don't remember like, like this first act is just full of really genuinely funny and like genuinely genuine interactions between these characters that really highlight who they are like there's not much more to say about it than that really just that it's it's noteworthy in how effective it is and how funny it is the rest of this episode is funny too there's definitely funny moments but the beginning of this episode had me laughing out loud a couple of times, which is not a thing that happens to me a lot. And all that leads up to Luz realizing that she needs to get her book back from Amity. She lent one of her books to Amity. I can't remember if we ever saw this. I feel like maybe we did, and I'm just not remembering the specific moment. This episode does refer back to the library, though, the library episode. So maybe it happened in that one, and I just don't remember. It doesn't really matter. She needs to get her book back from Amity they had planned to meet up in town. And it's during this meeting, at which Amity's older siblings are also present, which means we get to hang out with them some more, that Luz reveals to Amity that she enrolled at Hexside and that they're gonna be in the same class. But it turns out maybe they won't be, because you have to have mastered at least two spells to not get put in the remedial class. And Luz only knows the light spell so far. So she of course runs back to the Owl House immediately, and pushes Ida to go out and teach her something else. And Ida kind of puts it off for a second, but then when Luz rightfully points out that it's because Ida hasn't taught her anything else yet that she doesn't know any more spells, Ida agrees. So they head out to the Knee, a giant mountain that's shaped like a knee and positioned like the knee of the giant titan thing that makes up the island in order to learn. And I had forgotten that it was literally the knee of the creature. And that fact is so interesting to me because I'm forming some ideas for a theory about this show that should be out relatively soon. I'm going to wait until at least one or maybe two episodes of season two have aired to see if they're going to get into any of the stuff that I think they're going to get into this season first before I release it. But I have a really interesting theory coming up about how exactly the island works and King's specific relationship to it. And let's just say being reminded that this mountain seems to have literally formed from the knee of the Titan definitely helps make my theory not only a little more complete, but a little more plausible. And once they get there, they discover that Amity and her siblings are also there training. I guess Ida wasn't bullshitting when she said this is a place where witches often go to discover their magic and it's revealed here that amity in order to first learn the basics of a new spell has to use a practice wand which seems to have its own independent power source that can be drawn upon rather than her own internal magic which is interesting makes me wonder why they can't you know perfect this design and hand it out to people who normally couldn't do magic like loose to allow them to do magic more conventionally after all, I did suggest a while back, having completely forgot about this thing at the time, that the only thing missing for Luz to do magic was a power source. That it's not like the glyphs that she makes are suddenly giving her the power to do magic, that she still has to pull that from somewhere else. And she is shown to be able to use the wand in this episode when she borrows it from Amity, when Amity and her siblings go off to have dinner. Or more specifically, they were going to have dinner, but they have to save a bat. I'm not going to get into more detail than that, because it's, it's a pretty funny moment. I don't want to spoil it. And she's able to do spells. She's able to do uh, fireball spells more conventionally, more like one of the non-human witches in the show would. But she happens to piss off a creature that lives on the knee. I think they call it like the Slither Beast or something. And at the same moment, she 
drains all the energy from the wand. She's used up all the energy from the wand. And then Ida and the twins are both captured by the creature, so it's just her and Amity. And this fireball spell that Amity was learning was, like, going to be her go-to offensive spell, the implication is, right? And she can't do it without the wand yet. And now the wand's depleted, and Luce just knows a light spell. What are they going to do about this? And Amity, to her credit, does go after the captives and tries to save them, but recognizes that Luce would be in danger if she went to, so traps her in a barrier spell, leaving Luz to do exactly what Ida had earlier told her to do, to sit and reflect, because Ida had perched her in basically the same spot even, I think, and told her to reflect on nature, because she has to be able to learn to see the magic in nature if she's ever going to learn more magic. It's wild magic, the kind of magic that Ida herself prefers to practice. And Ida's main problem here, I think, as a teacher, is that she's not a teacher. She's not very good at this. I think what happened here, and it's just kind of implied, is that she saw the unique way that Luce learned spells and spent this entire time trying to decide how best to teach her and couldn't really think of anything, so brought her out here to learn the same kind of way that Ida might have in the hopes that it would work, but never really sat Luce down and explained that to her. So Luce comes out here and she, she's just sitting in the snow, doing nothing, and to her that feels like non-progress, and I totally understand that. But given a moment to actually reflect on herself and given the motivation to do so, seeing how she's the one who failed and screwed up and caused this situation in the first place, she gets frustrated with herself and she casts the only spell that she knows her light spell but in doing so she sees the glyph for the light spell in the stars above her and that allows her to finally make the tangible connection that Ida is right magic is everywhere and realizing that she's able to see another glyph in the snowfall around her and now she has an ice spell too and just like back when she learned the light spell she understands immediately how to apply this new spell to the situation at hand She's able to team up with Amity, they get the others free, in which Amity also manages to use her fire spell without the training wand, which was a moment for her too. And they defeat the creature and send it off. Now Luce will be able to get into the same class as Amity, and Amity even agrees to start a book club with her. Just so long as they mostly keep it a secret. And it's a really cute moment. In fact, I really liked Amity and her siblings in this one in particular. You can see better in this episode than any past episode, at least as far as I'm concerned, how different Amity is with someone once she's warmed up to them. And you can also kind of see the beginnings of the awkwardness between the two, because there's obviously an attraction between these two that becomes more and more apparent as the season goes on. And Amity's almost awkward relief when she suggests that Luce might not make it into the same class as her, i.e. she wouldn't have to see Luce every day and wouldn't have to deal with the feelings that she's already feeling, I think was the first little bit of establishment of that. Just like how on Luce's part, I think her desperation to prove herself to Amity by getting into the same class or grade or whatever you want to call it, because there's different classes at each level, right? We find that out relatively soon. I think that stems back from that too. She wants to impress Amity because she finds Amity appealing. She's just not really quite able to articulate why yet. But not only was Amity more approachable in this episode, but the twins were too. Amity mentions the first time we see the three of them that they've been extra nice to her lately, trying to make up for the stuff at the library. And she didn't sound like she was being sarcastic when she said they were trying to make up for it. It really does sound like they recognize that they went too far. And we get to see them in a more everyday kind of situation here, and they don't come off as nearly as insufferable here as they usually are. Like, they pick at Amity and tease her, but in the way that siblings would. They feel less like bullies here than they did the last time we saw them, which suggests that either they are making a genuine attempt to change, or that was, for some reason or another, a special circumstance. And that's not even all that this episode does. It does all of that. It does all of that character stuff. It does all that establishment stuff for the magic. Like... This feels like a foundational episode 
for when we finally learn more about how the magic of this world works. And yet it did all of that while still having time for a king plot back at the house where he's... Again, it's very funny and I don't want to spoil it too much, so playing with his stuffed animals, let's say. This is just a really efficient, really tight, really funny and entertaining episode of this show that I get the sense will only feel more and more important to the overarching plot of this story as the story goes on. I mean, heck, this even establishes stuff going into Luce's first days at Hexside. It establishes a little bit about the school, which it didn't have to do, right? But how cool is that? And it, there's something else, something I noticed at the beginning of the episode. We finally see uh, the characters bring more stuff back in from the human world to sell at Ida's stand. And it got me thinking, and this is going to be one of the components of that upcoming theory about King, we don't really know much about these characters' pasts yet. Especially King, but also Ida. We learn some stuff about her past as the season comes to a close. But as far as I recall, we never learn this season why she has taken such an interest in the human world and its artifacts. If that's just something that she happened upon, or if there's an actual reason for that. And it got me thinking what the reason could be if there is an actual reason for it and it's not some kind of coincidence. Just a brief observation that I wanted to bring up real quick because I totally forgot to do so earlier in the review. All of that said, though, I'd like to know, of course, what do you guys think of the Owl House episode Adventures in the Elements? If you have seen it, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else who you think would enjoy my content, subscribe if you haven't. You can also check out links to my various social medias and to all of the ways that you can help out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.